located in uh, Bali, uh, part of Bali, we are on the east coast, in a place called Sanur, which used to be a fishing village, but is now has grown into a reasonable bigger village, so to speak. Um, and the, the villa is a, I would call it a simple three bedroom villa with a pool, full kitchen, living room. And it's about, I would say five minutes walk to the beach. Centrally located, conveniences all around within walking distance. Grocery stores, bar, restaurants, the hospital, pharmacy, things of that nature. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, you, I've divided up my life in three parts from uh, zero to 30, from, and then from 30 to 60. And now I'm kind of in, you know, the last phase of my life, so to speak. For the last 15 years, I lived in the Caribbean, predominantly Bahamas as well as St. Martin. And uh, I felt I needed a change. I mean, my uh, family is in the United States. Uh, it's partly for financial reasons as well. It becomes extremely expensive to live of your retirement in, uh, in the Caribbean as well as most places in the United States. Did some research um, and I found that uh, Asia is, is, is affordable. Uh, it's different, uh, different cultures, different habits. Um, and it always intrigued me. So I decided on Bali, uh, particularly here because it's, uh, I always love the ocean. Uh, it's close to the waters. But all in all, I've been kind of low key figuring things out. Predominantly, uh, you know, don't forget I'm uh, by myself. Uh, I'm a single guy who decided at uh, my age to make a drastic change in my, in my life. Um, so the adjustment period has been uh, mentally and physically it took a lot longer than, than I thought it would, quite frankly. Well, uh, to be honest with you, anybody says, well, you know, you're aging gracefully and this and that and the other, it's bullshit. Getting old is a bullshit. okay? Um, physically, it's, uh, you get, uh, yeah, you get smaller things like, you know, the wheels falling off the wagon, so to speak. I have a new hip, uh, probably I have a, you know, torn rotator, or rotator cuff, I have some small heart problems, um, and physically, you just don't have the energy to do a lot of things uh, as you used to, and that's just part of life. But it's it's not easy. Well, I'm I'm certainly not gonna uh, pursue the famous question as to what's the purpose of life, and uh, and, and no, I mean that's that's. Uh, that's beyond me and, and, and I'm not in, into that per se. What I would like to achieve is a higher degree of self-happiness, uh, although I'm content. Well, I have geographically specific things I want to see. Um, I want to see more of Indonesia. I want to see more of surrounding countries, i.e. Thailand, i.e. Uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam more of the Asian uh, countries, I'd like to see more of those. But uh, that's just geographically. I, I like to find uh, some better connection with, with God, uh, pursue that, which I have not. I've been dabbling in it, but certainly not in depth. Uh, spend a lot of time on it, so to speak. Um, so those are, and, and I would like to get in a lot better physical shape and uh, as well as, as mental shape, so to speak. We, uh, he's now what, she's now what, a couple of months old, good companion to have. Um, obviously also looking for, yeah, perhaps companionship, uh, relationships, all that is, is going to play an important role to marking things off the, uh, the bucket list. So, we're here at the boardwalk in Sanur, which is about less than five minutes from the villa. The boardwalk is about a five mile strip on the ocean, 
which is full of restaurants and warungs. A warung is a type of restaurant, but it's not really a full-blown restaurant. The basic difference is that the people who own warungs not necessarily have to pay taxes. But they are small, locally owned, and providing with, with local food. The nice part, obviously, is sitting on the boardwalk, which is right here on the ocean. Um, it overlooks uh, Nusa Panida, which is about a mile, a couple of miles away, which is a little island off the coast. Very popular with, uh, with tourism as well. So this is uh, basically satay, um, champur which is uh, skewers of chicken, lamb and beef with a satay sauce, which is a peanut butter sauce with fresh vegetables and uh, rice cakes. Uh, this is, uh, well, and this is waterfronts are more and more expensive. Uh, this is 90,000 rupiahs. And uh, normally this stuff, if you eat this in a waru, in the local uh, quote unquote restaurants, you probably pay 40, 50,000 rupees for that. Yeah. Which is, you know, two, three dollars. Hey folks, well as you can see, I'm doing very little, <laughs> or as we say in good old Dutch, I'm doing f**k all. First of all, a shout out, this is February 1st, right? Yeah. 2021. I'm going to have a shout out to my uh, kids, Josh and Nicole in uh, Minnesota, where it's probably 50 below. And uh, here it is 85 sunny, although it's a rainy season. Uh, beautiful weather, nice breeze, and we are uh, in a resort here uh, just to get away for a day. I would, it's a fantastic little resort. Uh, it's about, I don't know, about an hour drive from Sanua, a place called Uluwatu. We'll show you a little bit more later on. Um, it's on the cliffs, so the ocean is not too far away can walk to the ocean. Swimming is kind of hard because of the, the tides here are kind of tough, but other than that, I would say it's a three-star hotel. You know, in Bali, it's, 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 you've got such a variety of hospitality assets, ranging from one-star little uh, homestays all the way up to six-star. This is probably a three-star little resort, cost well, we're in my budget about $40, $45, which I'm sure it's COVID price, but I'm not too sure they're charging much more even in season for that. So it's a uh, well-located situation. One of the things I alluded to earlier, the difference between Iluwatu and, and, and Sanu is the fact that you here you need to have a scooter or a car to get around because nothing is in, in, in walking distance. So. Um, just trying to relax a little bit. The problem with relaxing is you don't get much done. And one of the things uh, I want to do, it's one thing to have a bucket list and things you want to accomplish. Uh, the other thing is to really execute. So that's my dilemma of the day. You become extremely content. Yeah. Yesterday, last night, we were watching, uh, what do you call it, horse movie? Eat love and do something. Pray love. Pray love Pray and love. God, was that an awful movie? And I don't understand why people after the movie flock to Bali because uh, it was anyway certainly not impressive. Well, you know, when you're in a situation like mine, and you are in an area like where where I'm at. Uh, you know, you kind of 
lost a little bit from reality. And, and reality is, is that basically the world is in a world of hurt. And we are kind of, well, not necessarily aloof, but we are kind of, uh, yeah, it, I'm sure COVID is in Bali, uh, and we all doing our share here, wear masks and, 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 all, and social distancing. But it's not prevalent, so to speak. It's not in your face every day. Uh, but if, if you watch the news, and uh, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, this is some serious sh** on there. Uh, so I just hope that people think about what they're doing in the United States and all over the world. And damn, just wear a mask. What's the big deal? Hard liquor. So anyway, I uh, wanted to recap a little bit about a trip to La Cabana, which was spectacular. Uh, it was very interesting to uh, to watch a movie outdoors on a laptop. Uh, under the sky, which was uh, fantastic. Although we never finished the movie uh, because of the rain, but um, the visit, including the trip down to the beach, and as the pictures will show, it's really uh, it's really quite in a uh, quite a setting there, actually. Nevertheless, when I went, when I went to bed last night. Um, I woke up about one o'clock in the morning with a, I don't know what you call it, never had them before, but an anxiety attack, a panic attack, and it was about one o'clock, I could not breathe. And the first thing that went to my mind is that, oh, damn, I got COVID. You know, it's a natural reaction nowadays, anything goes wrong, a little pain here, a little pain there, I said, oh, COVID. But it wasn't COVID, obviously, but it, uh, scared the daylight out of me um, and my mind was going not 150 miles an hour but 700 miles an hour of, of an immediate retrospect of my last uh, 69, 70 years on earth and uh, very depressive thoughts, uh, failures and, and uh, missing my children and what the hell am I doing here and uh, you know, this is kind of, uh, yeah, kind of the end, so to speak. So I tried some meditation and it took me about, I don't know, until four o'clock in the morning to get back to normal and get back to sleep. Pacing in the middle of the night, then again sitting down, uh, trying to calm my mind without any uh, tools to do so, so to speak. Fortunately, I got over it, uh, but nevertheless, the, the, you know, the thought as to what are the underlining uh, reasons for having that attack still lingers on and will keep me, will keep me uh, in thought for a while. I just all of a sudden realized, is that what have you done to make this a better place? What have you done to make this a better world? Um, and maybe that has to contribute to my anxiety that uh, I have been very privileged leading a pretty superficial life. This has been a pretty uh, self-centered, superficial ride so far. And I think that has contributed to my uh, anxiety attack that at 69, 70 years old, you all of a sudden start realizing, what, what have you done to make this beautiful world a better place to, to, to live in.